There's a number of issues that I wish to clarify, in particular last week's statements made by uh, Manua Kamkamida, uh, saying that uh, we lied, that the former Prime Minister Lesin Ngarase was uh, responsible for elections. Uh, I think Manua obviously is either too ignorant, is deliberately obfuscating, obviously he's not speaking to all the lawyers uh, that are around him in uh, the People's Alliance Party, or PAPI as we call them, uh, and indeed everybody uh, else that is making those allegations. I have with me here uh, this afternoon the ministerial assignments when Lassine Ngarasi was the Prime Minister. I've got it here for you. You can take a good shot of it, Fiji Village, uh, in Fiji Times. I'll give you copies of it, we'll put it in our flash drive. And it says here, the Ministry of Assignment, 23rd June 2006, departments that come under the Prime Minister's office is the Office of the Supervisor of Elections, the Constituency Boundaries Commission, in those days it was the Constituency Boundaries Commission, and the Electoral Act. And it says here, as Trick says, indicates the responsibility and is subject to any provisions as to independence of the office. It's all here in black and white. Unfortunately, what is really disconcerting is certain media organizations continue to simply parrot anything that's said by one or two political parties and run it as a gospel truth, when it really isn't. These Gazette notices are available in any library, go to any law firm, they'll have the Gazette notices. You go to the uh, the government gazette, the, the gazettes, uh, where you can buy the gazettes, you can buy the gazettes yourself, you can go to any law library, you can go to the archives, it's available there. 2006. 2001, ministerial assignment, Prime Minister, Lesin Ngarase, departments, it says, Office of the Supervisor of Elections, Constituency Boundaries Commission, Electoral Commission, Office of the Prime Minister, which law does it come, comes under him? Electoral Act. 1998. 2001 again, when we had the overthrow of the Chaudhry government and we had this interim government put in place. Again, Electoral Act, Office of the Supervisory Elections, Constituency Boundaries Commission, Electoral Commission. We've gone back even further. 1999, Mahendra Chaudhry, who's making all these claims of conflict of interest. The newest Prime Minister, again, ministerial assignment. Office of the Supervisor of Elections, Constituency Boundaries Commission, Electoral Commission, which act comes under the Office of the Prime Minister, Electoral Act. Let's go back even further, 1997, Office of the Prime Minister, Sidi Beni Rambuka, his ministerial assignment, Office of the Supervisor of Elections, Electoral Decree, 1991. In those days, of course, the Supervisor of Elections Office, the accounts was done through the Prime Minister's Office. They are attached to the Prime Minister's office, not independent as we have today. 1994, ministerial assignment, Prime Minister. Who was the Prime Minister then? 1994. Siti Beni Rambuka, Manoa's leader. Departments, Office of the Supervisor of Elections, laws that fall under the Prime Minister's office, Electoral Decree, 1991. 1992, let's go back to 1992. Who was the then Prime Minister? Sitiveni Rambuka. Departments under him, Office of the Supervisor of Elections. Electoral Decree, 1991, under him. Rambuka is participating in these elections. Rambuka's deputy leader is saying that it's a conflict because a minister has actually been assigned the elections office or the supervisory elections, when he himself, as the Prime Minister, under his ministerial assignment, he had that. Mahendra Chaudhry had that. Lesnian Garase had that. Yet, they have the audacity or the ineptitude to come up and say that we are lying. When it is here, written in black and white, gazetted, signed by whoever was the president then. And yet, we have seen continuously Fiji Times, CFL, 
running these stories, simply parroting it, without any taking out any time to investigate whether what they're saying is true or not. And in fact, Manoa Kamkamila, who probably should have stuck to the private sector, owes us an apology for calling us a liar. We don't make these statements willy-nilly. We actually make statements based on facts. We've also seen a continuous propagation by Fiji Times, by CFL, in simply parroting whatever the People's Alliance Party says or National Federation Party says, without actually checking the facts. We have a very sad state of affairs today. You have, for example, NFP, which has the right to do so, has reported us to FICEC. Yet, yet, you have the General Secretary making comments on that reporting as to what FICEC should do, as to what other people should do. They have absolutely no idea on what due process means. They have absolutely no idea, no other SPG Times, no CFL, have any idea what does an independent process mean. They throw these words around, bandy these words around, yet do not understand what it means. When you report a matter to an independent body, they are independent. You don't give a running commentary. We have not given a running commentary to anything. Yet, the media organization, in particular CFL and Fiji Times, believes it can continue to run those types of stories. And here are these people holding themselves out to be an alternative government. They have absolutely no idea about the separation of powers. Absolutely no idea about investigative you know, processes that takes place with due process. You have people going around and saying, oh, because there is a particular complaint has been made, we can say, what is the update? You don't interfere with the process. We have not made any public statement about NFP making a complaint about us and therefore what is FICEC doing about it? Let them do their job. You've lost your complaint? Let them do their job. You need to understand the media plays a very significant part in all of this. Yet we have seen a continuous, a continuous bias in respect of the way these things are reported. These assignments, Republic of Fiji gazettes are available. Media organizations like CFL, Fiji Times have lawyers that could have very simply checked. They could have checked in their law libraries. It's all there. Yet you ran with these stories. Just because somebody stands up and makes a comment. When we make a comment as a party, you won't run those comments independently. You'll go running off to the other political parties. And what we've seen is now a culture of complaint by these two political parties, NFP and PAPI. It was great to hear the leader of Sodelpa the other day saying, we are simply focusing on our campaign. We're simply going to tell the people what we're going to offer. That's the way it should be done. That's what we have been doing. Whenever we've seen a breach, we have actually hailed it. But we continue with that with whatever we are doing. We've announced our 20 candidates, they're out campaigning. They're out campaigning. We'll be announcing more candidates in the next couple of weeks or so. They'll also be out campaigning. We already have people out campaigning, telling them why they should vote for Fiji first. What is our policy? What are our policies? If you listen to the People's Alliance Party, the puppies, and if you listen to NFP, all they're doing is not actually offering any alternatives, none whatsoever. They have not enunciated their policies on the specific areas of the economy. We have Seni Nambo, I came across this press release. They've lodged a complaint with FICA about the banner. Yep. They continue to issue press statements, saying it's laughable what we have said, and therefore, you know, they should be investigated. They've already lost the complaint. Let FICEC do its job. 
should also complain with the supervisor of elections office, Fijian elections office, let them do their job. Let them come up with the outcome. Why do you have to give a running commentary? People who do this are in fact extremely desperate. They're extremely desperate because they are very hollow in terms of policies. They're very hollow in terms of the approach and the understanding of basic governance by the separation of powers, about the independence of various institutions. I was actually quite flabbergasted in reading, just scheming through the uh, press release put out by Manu Akamkamiza. They are surrounded by lawyers. They have got lawyers as the deputy leader, whatever they are in their party. NFP has got legal advisors. And they're coming up with such pedestrian comments. Such pedestrian comments, legally flawed. And here we are, wasting our time, talking about such matters. We had, for example, we lodged a complaint about Sodelpa, for example, some weeks back, putting up various policy measures without the, uh, you know, the financial accountability, saying how much it will cost. The supervisor election said, take it down. They took it down. And they moved along. We moved along. We've got bigger fish to fry. The bigger fish to fry is being able to appeal to the voters on our policies. What is our game plan for the country for the next four years? That's what we are doing. So, ladies and gentlemen, as I said, we'll give you this copies of the Gazette. We'll give it to you on a flash drive. And you can please go and read it and see what's, what's happening in that. I also wanted to highlight, I was sent by Vijay Narayan. Obviously, Vijay Narayan has completely compromised himself in terms of his independence. Sent me an email saying, oh, I think Honorable Bhiman Prasad and Rambuka or somebody has made comments to Radio New Zealand that the elections won't be free and fair or whatever it was. Wanting us to comment on that. Again, parity. Not doing an assessment of what they said and is it true or not. And I've highlighted this before. The EU report on the elections in 2006. Again, I can give you copies of this. And again, I can highlight to you there are so many errors in and fundamental breaches in running a free and fair and credible election. Yet, nobody actually has taken the time, nor most of you over here in this room, have taken the intellectual input to look at what happened before and what is not happening now. Today we signed the, uh, the Fijian government, signed the, T, uh, the agreed terms of reference with our multinational observer group, the co-chairs. Uh, India, Indonesia, and Australia. They're quite happy to participate in that particular process. You would have seen that. Some of you were there. But in this particular report, there are so many fundamental errors that took place in the elections. For example, let me read out to you. The new register of voters suffered from several shortcomings. These included the misspelling of voters' names, wrong constituency allocations, and the failure to register a greater number of voters. For example, in Lambasa district, approximately 700 voters were incorrectly, incorrectly registered in wrong constituencies. And in Nandi Lotoka Bar constituencies, approximately 1,900 voters were incorrectly registered. It goes on. There is another one which will, might tickle your fancy. It, for example, talks about a voter turnout of 101% in the Kondrovic. In other words, there were more ballot papers in the box than the actual number of people registered in that constituency. And people say it was good then. This is kind of the kind of obfuscation that's taking place. The OSE, Office of the Supervised Election, did not provide an official explanation of a voter turnout of 101% in Dakon Drove, East constituency. The official register of voters of the OSC stated 7,639 registered voters in the constituency. However, the returning officer of the Northern Division said the total number of registered voters were 9,012. No accountability. I urge you, if you're serious about your profession, 
And indeed, if the organizations you work for are truly independent, and don't just simply say you're independent, it goes with the, as they say, the proof is in the eating of the pudding. Read this report and see the number of uh, flaws that took place and compare that to the 2014, 2018, and indeed what's already happening in the 2022 election. So ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> I just wanted to highlight that to you. Those of you who want copies of this, I can give copies of this to you too also. I'm happy to take any questions.